Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation. Talk radio for the thinking person, home of borders, language, culture, and here he is, Michael Savage. They got the Clifton tags right there. I don't do down to down two thirty down five. I don't do it in thirty five down forty bear down five down sixty down to down fifty down five down down sixty bear down five. I don't do it down seventy five. I need to bear down eighty down eighty five. Iowa Caucasian Caucus on the Savage Nation. And I mean we could laugh about it all we want and say it's not representative, it's demographically not America, it's something from the age of Andrew Jackson. That would all be true in many ways. That would all be true in many ways, but something happened before the show that is astonishing. 20 minutes before this program, I got a call from the Donald Trump organization asking me if Donald Trump could be on this show. And we pre-recorded an interview that's going to be, a, I would, what, what shall I say, amazing, astounding. The day of the caucus. Is it the Caucasian caucus? The, the Iowa caucus. And we talked about what he thinks, why he's working so hard. And a person I very much respect, I tweeted him and I said, Trump called, he's going to be on the show. And this person said, is he the only one asking to be on your show? The others never? He said, Cruz never, Rubio never? None of them, I said, will come on the show. And what's interesting to me is that Donald Trump came on the show long before I supported him. You know that, don't you? The other cowards won't come on the show ever. They're exactly what I've been telling you my entire career. They're part of the established uh, political order. Cruz, Rubio, no matter how they pose, no matter how many Bibles Cruz holds up and his eyes roll with a snake in his hand, I mean, he's the new Jimmy Carter. Over the weekend, Cruz with the eyes looking to heaven. It's unbelievable to me the charade that's going on here. All he needs is snakes and some strychnine. If you ought to drink strychnine next on the stump somewhere in South Carolina or in Georgia near Jimmy's uh, hometown. So this is a very serious business, the Caucasian Caucus. Now I want to talk about what's going on in the country right now. And when Mr. Trump's interview is played at exactly 34 minutes after the hour on the Savage Nation, fresh from Iowa, he would have been with us live right now, he told me, but he has another speech that was scheduled. So here's the interesting thing, and this is interesting to me. I thought about this and I said, look, there are three Americas for all of us. There's the America that was, there's the America that we want it to be, and then there's the America that will be. I'm sorry, folks. We're running around with three Americas in our head. Now, many of you say, ah, come on, we can save this country. Oh, I know we can save the country, but it is never going to be the America that it was. Never. It will never be that country again. Will it ever be the country we want it to be? Doubtful. It will be 50% of the country that we want it to be. Obama and the Democrat socialist Islamist machine have put in poison pills that can never be taken out of the body politic. Never. Even if they're taken out, the damage will have been done forever. Mass immigration, open borders, radicals in all aspects of government, a shrunken, weakened military, a open trade in ways you can never imagine that we can never overcome, no war on drugs, a moral meltdown. Over the weekend, I saw an article I was going to talk about today. You talk about watering down and weakening the military with this man, this thing in the White House, whatever his name is, Ash Carter, should be arrested for war crimes. I saw this story. I said, this can't be real. This is made up. DOD will allow troops on duty to breastfeed. I said, someone, this is a joke. As part of his commitment to build a military force of the future, Defense un uh, Undefense Secretary Ash backstabbing Quisling Carter, announced a series of, quote, family-friendly initiatives to attract and retain, quote, the best America has to offer. We're not Google. We're not Walmart, he said. We're war fighters. But that doesn't mean we, we should not be challenging ourselves just like the private sector, Carter told reporters at the Pentagon. So the new initiatives will permit troops on duty to breastfeed. Ladies and gentlemen, do you think this intimidates 
ISIS. Time out, boys. Our warriors have to go breastfeed. So what they're doing is they're building a domestic military, not a fighting military. The Pentagon is filled with career bureaucrats who do nothing for the war effort to speak of except push papers. And now that's the new military under Barack Obama. How are we going to ever overcome that? Let's say uh, that President Trump puts in a new defense secretary, he puts in Senator Cotton, if Senator Cotton even wants the job, someone with actual combat experience, and he tries to take on that bureaucracy. How hard is that going to be? Which is what I'm talking about. Now, it gets even worse. Take a look at the rest of the stuff. Let's say Trump builds the wall. Let's say he builds the wall. And by the way, you can call the show at any time at 855-400-7282 on the day of the Caucasian caucus here. May as well have a caucus in, uh, in, in Tijuana. It may be more representative of, of America than, than Iowa. But okay, okay, whatever you think is fine with me. Goes back to 1820, and I'm supposed to get excited over the caucus. I said to a supermarket clerk this morning, he came running up. He's a really nice guy, very conservative. He said, today's the big day, huh? I said, what big day? He said, why the Iowa caucus? I said, oh, the Caucasian caucus? I said, we may as well have a caucus in Tijuana. And a Mexican guy in the, in, the, in the market laughed. He said it would be more representative of New York, Los Angeles, and many other big cities like Chicago, San Francisco. So what is the Iowa caucus? Why is it so important? Well, as you will hear in my, I would say, my quick discussion, it runs nine minutes with Donald Trump today, fresh off the press. It is not structurally significant. It is symbolically significant. Do you understand that? Do you know who votes in the Iowa caucus? It's basically apparatchiks. It's all the people who go and wear funny hats and wave flags and blow up balloons at these conventions. These are party operatives. They're not the, the, they're not the average person. So why are we all excited over the, the, the Caucasian caucus? It's a symbolic thing. It's good for the news business. It builds up interest. They all get excited. They fly to Iowa. They sit in the hotel rooms. They make believe it matters. Does it really matter? How does it really matter? Tell me how it really matters. It's symbolic. It's symbolic in that uh, Trump's going to win in New Hampshire, that's pretty sure. If he wins here and wins there, it's pretty much he's going to be a, it's a sweep. It will have a psychological effect upon the, popular, the voting public, is what I'm saying, right? Now, if he loses tonight in, in, uh, in uh, Iowa because Cruz was able to um, hoodwink the public into thinking he's a devout, you know, uh, Bible-thumping man. I'm so sick of the Bible being waved around during uh, uh, these campaign stops. I, I thought there was a separation of church and state. I find it offensive, frankly. You know, to me, religion is something that's private, like sexuality. Keep it to yourself. I'm not interested in it. Just keep it to yourself. I really don't want to know about it. That's your business. I, I really don't care about your religion. Keep it to yourself. Practice what you want. Leave me alone. Why is Trump, I'm sorry, why is Cruz making such an issue of his religion? Why? Hello. And number two, and this is the most important message of the day. Number two is the most important message of all today. No matter who wins, and I hope it's Donald, no politician can ever save you. I've said this long before you heard it echoed in the echo chamber of talk radio. Don't have too much faith in any politician. The Bible warns us against politicians. The Bible warns us against having faith in man, by the way. They call it kings. They say have no faith in kings. Of course, the politicians are kings and queens. We know that. The Bible cautions us to have too much faith in kings and queens because they will always disappoint us. So I, I say that to you with great, with great reserve and great caution. They're only people. You know, there was a book written years ago called The Fault of the Apple, a small unknown novel. And The Fault of the Apple says it all. We're only people. We're all fallen angels. None of us are perfect, and none of us in politics are perfect. In fact, most of us in politics are less than perfect. It takes a tremendous ego to be a politician, as it does to be a talk radio host. I, I admit it. We're all narcissistic and egomaniacs in the public sphere. Let no one fool you. I'll be first to tell you. You have to be self-absorbed and self-obsessed to be in the public sphere, or else you'd be a very, you'd be a very different person. And the fact is, is that there are good ones and bad ones at it. There are those who are only for themselves, and they're the worst kind. 
And then there are those who are for themselves, but also for the country. They're the best kind, and that's the best we can hope for. The phone number here is 855 7282 We're talking about the Caucasian Caucus in Iowa. We're talking about the poison pills that Obama has put into the uh, nation that can almost never be taken out. Open borders, mass immigration, radicals planted in all aspects of government, a weakened, a shrunken military, trade that is imbalanced, no war on drugs, a moral meltdown. Wow, what a job that will be. And uh, the DOD will allow troops on duty to breastfeed. Can you believe what Obama is doing to transform the greatest military the world has ever seen? Can you astoundingly believe this, that he's allowed to get away with this? Well, you better believe it. Donald Trump will be on this show from the interview I did 10 minutes ago at 34 minutes after the hour. Use your social networks to tell people who are interested in this election, who will be anyone with an IQ over 80, to listen because he chose to be on my show for a reason. This is the Savage Nation. Write it down. I'll be back. I know many of you are nervously biting your nails waiting for Donald Trump to appear on the Savage Nation, which will be played in about 10 minutes at 34 minutes after the hour. I was My cell phone rang at uh, about 20 minutes to uh, the beginning of the show. We didn't ask for Donald to be on because he was on last week live, and I wouldn't push it. He's generally on once in a while, and I, I don't ask. The show generally runs without guests. And it was like, can he be on the show? Like, when? I said, well, we go on the air in 30 minutes. Well, he has a speech. We arranged an interview. It's not as specific as last Monday's where I asked four demanding questions and got four very specific answers to those of you who are rightly doubting Thomas's about Mr. Trump, where you say he keeps saying make America great again, but he's not specific enough. He was very specific last Tuesday, very specific on four specific questions, but you didn't want to hear it. And this is what happens, the big lie. Oh, Donald Trump keeps saying the same thing. He doesn't answer questions. Rubbish. He answers questions, but you don't want to hear the answers. So I have that as well, and we have the new stuff today. You're going to hear what he has to say to you on the day of the vote in, the, in Iowa, the Caucasian caucus. And on a side note, you know, I'm waiting until Wednesday to do this. I'm waiting. I'm biting my, my tongue for a week. Zika virus, Zika virus, Zika virus. It's an epidemic that's out of control. World Health Organization has already declared it a health emergency. America, with the politicians in the CDC, are making believe it will go away. They're lying about it like they do about every other disease outbreak. They're covering it up, and they can only get away with it so long. Fortunately for you, and I don't know how the timing worked out, my new ebook is coming out exactly next week, and it's on michaelsavage.com. It's called Diseases Without Borders. It's right on target. That's all. It's that simple. Now let's go to the callers on the Savage Nation. We have a caller from Iowa. Eileen, fire away 30 seconds or less. Yes, thank you. Uh, I'm a 67-year-old Iowa farm girl, just retired, 45 years of teaching, so I feel now I can give my opinion without influencing my students. I am definitely going to vote for uh, Trump. He can be rude crude, obnoxious, but you know what? He speaks the truth. I kind of thought the same of you when I first started listening to you, but you always come through with the truth. So I wanted to let you know I am a participant <laughs> tonight. You know, how I, you know how I would answer that, Eileen? You know, in my neighborhood, it was called brashness or honesty around America. I, I learned when I moved to the West Coast that people were shocked by my attitude. They thought that I was brash, I was crude, I was too New York. But then eventually they found out that if they listened to me long enough, I was saying something that struck them as true in most cases. And that's the way it is. You know who's the most truthful? Let's put it this way. Wouldn't you say God is quite truthful? Of course, yes. And isn't, isn't God harsh at times? Oh, many times. Isn't God a vengeful God? Isn't our God a vengeful God? Read the Bible, yes. Yes, the Bible's filled with hellfire and brimstone. It's not Mr. Rogers' Bible, That's where, a man, where a woman wakes up and her husband becomes a woman and they go out trolling for girls together. That's what's going on in the West 